its Scottish Cup fourth round weekend when the top tier clubs enter the fray of the oldest cup competition in the world. There's no doubting the tie of the round though and that's here. All eyes on Easter Road this afternoon for a massive Edinburgh derby as the top two teams from the capital battle it out for a place in the fifth round and of course have the added bonus of putting a serious dent into the season of their fiercest rivals. It's Hibs versus Hearts, it's Easter Road, it's Scottish Cup Derby Day, where else would you rather be? Yes, welcome to Hibs TV and Easter Road, where it feels very much like the calm before the storm. I'm Adam Tomlinson, and thank you for joining us for all the build-up to today's Edinburgh Derby. And I'll be joined by a man who wrote his name in Hibs' legendary status after a hat-trick against today's opponents. <laughs> Again for movement. Latapi switching out to the right, trying to create something. Oh, the deflection, Potalainen! There's the equaliser! Mitsu Potalainen! Well, he scored in two in for a Derby's last season. And he's back on the score sheet here. Three minutes before half time. The break of the ball from that flick there. And Potalainen with the right foot leaves Anti Niemi with no chance. The deflection, I think, put Stephen Presley off. Patalainen took full advantage. And that's goal number five of the season for the hip striker. The dying seconds of the first half. Can Hart's hold out, it's swept in there. Was headed down again, Patalainen, it's there! 2-1 to Hibs, he's done it again! And a bit of gymnastics to finish it off. Well, who was picking him up? Peeled off there, hoping that a hips player would get the touch. They did. And there's Potter laying in just a touch past the Emmy. It's 2 1. And Hips are in front. Latapi. James. The referee. Leading and abetting Hips plates. And Hips come away. He's on side. O'Neill. Is this the first? He's got the hat trick! And yet again, he'll probably get the gold medal this evening as well. Well, the referee got involved, and then eventually the ball broke to O'Neill. He found Mitsu Padalainen, and he remained calm. A lot of work to be done here, and just needed the same foot, the direction into the back of the net. Mixu, welcome to Hibs TV. We obviously just saw the goals there, the hat-trick that you scored in that Edinburgh derby. Did that bring back some nice memories? Absolutely. What a wonderful day. Uh, brilliant. But uh, I remember it was a, you know, he wasn't playing sailing. Uh, we didn't start too well. Hearts went one nil ahead, and uh, and then thankfully we were two two one up um, half time. But uh, but it was uh, it wasn't playing sailing from the beginning. But uh, but what a second half, what an end to the match, and what a feeling. Did you have a favourite? Out of those goals? No, well, <laughs> whenever you manage to score a goal, you're in uh, in a cloud seven. But um, no, it was uh, probably the, the third one. Um, wrong footing, Antiniemi, the hard goal. Uh, what a build up as well. I, I don't know how I got there. By the way, just just watching it, um, <laughs> I was I was involved with the with the link up with with Russell in the midfield halfway line, and then I got to the end of things. So uh, you know, I don't know why I must have been. Uh, must have been on something, but uh, to get into that, that John O'Neill fantastic cross. But uh, no, it was a, it was a tremendous and tremendous performance. Not only by myself, you know, it's, it's a team effort. You know, I got fantastic supply uh, into the box. You saw Ulrik Larsen's header, and uh, I, I read it inside the uh, six-yard box, and uh, an easy tapping for me. So uh, you know, easy goals, but that's uh, created by teammates. Yeah, and you linked up really nicely with. Russell Latapi as well in that game and during your time here too. How good was he? Oh, it was an uh, absolute pleasure to play with uh, because of his uh, awareness, because of his uh, ability to pass the ball. Um, he was always there when I got the ball and I, I held it. Uh, he, he showed, I linked with him and then, then we went from there. 
uh, as we show, as we uh, we seen in the, in those goals, and the and the Russell's goal was a was a was a great one. Um, I really enjoy that playing with him because uh, if if you have a such a maestro uh, just below you as a centre forward, you ha always have somebody there you can trust. He keeps the ball and all that, and uh, and then the ball, ball is playing wide or whatever um, combination from there. But uh, it was a uh, tremendous. He he can. He was able to create anything from nothing uh, with his uh, trickery and uh, and and change a uh, you know little turning and change the pace and uh, although he wasn't quick but uh, his timing uh, of his touch and uh, and uh, and awareness in passing was exceptional. What was it like for you when you were preparing for an Edinburgh derby? Really looked forward to it because uh, because of the fans. Um, Hibs fans are fantastic, um, passionate. Uh, they let you know as well if you don't perform, which fair enough. Um, and um, but before Hearts came, uh, we used to really look forward to. It. We we had a we had a team full of um, mentally tough players, experienced players, players who wanted that stage, who wanted to play against the Hearts, who wanted to show them that they, you know we we rule the city. And um, and and those days we did. Um, I remember going to the to the Hearts matches. Uh, you know, strong characters, uh, the, the bus load, load full, and uh, I used to shout, let's get ready for Jumbo," <laughs> And uh, that was the spirit, you know, yeah. let, let's get ready and come <laughs> on, let's fight and uh, and um, and then bring it to us. Um, it was, uh, th those were special matches, and uh, like they are nowadays. I mean, you, you summed it up well, summed it up well, uh, you're saying that uh, where else would you be? Yeah. You know, this is a fantastic occasion and uh, a good, uh, good one to be at. Is that the attitude then that the Hibs players need today? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you need tough mentality. You need mentality that, that you will dominate. You need mentality that you first to that ball. You need mentality you thinking before them. Um, if you get into the into the atmosphere, into the hype and all that, and what if, what if, is no good. You need that that clarity in your mind. You need to be you need to be um, on your top game, and and like everybody says. Good players shine when the occasion is big. Yeah. So th these matches are exactly like that. You need to you need to perform these matches. You need to read the game earlier before them. You need to be first with the ball so you can play, you can pass, you can cause uh, problems to the opponent. Yeah, and it's certainly a big game today. We come into this one too unbeaten after that disappointing performance at Tyne Castle just at the turn of the year but Kevin Nisbet is in fine form and Lee Johnson will be hoping that that can continue as well in the United area what, oh, what a strike that was from Kyle McGuinness Pete Birigetti all ends up from about 25 yards and crashed back off the crossbar right hand side of the defence and Josh Campbell in a more familiar role um, playing wide a, a front three. Campbell picks up on the edge of the young Nisbet chance shoot score! <laughs> Give the ball to Kevin Nisbet at the moment and there's only one place it's going to end up. Chance here for Hearts on the edge of the yard box. Steps back inside, Stevenson gets the shot away, it deflects into the net beyond David Marshall and United restored their lead. Campbell with some space to work in here. Goes to the shooting opportunity, just over the top. In fact, it was helped there by the hands of Birigetti. It's a decent strike there from Josh Campbell, Joel. As well, finds McCurdy. Shoots. Oh, unlucky for McCurdy. He's done absolutely everything right there, Joel. Off the underside of the crossbar. Ball into the area. Nisbet does well to bring it down. Can he get a shot away? Kevin Nisbet. He does! Kevin Nisbet again! Out of nothing! Well, I said already the ball to Kevin Nisbet inside the penalty area and there's a pretty good chance it's going to end up in the back of the opposition net and once again that's exactly what happens.
Lee, Hearts in the Scottish Cup on Sunday. How much are you looking forward to this one? Yeah, really looking forward to it. You know, Easter Road be an unbelievable atmosphere. It feels like a really big game, probably the biggest of the season so far. And uh, we've got to play with a skill and a will to excite the fans, to get everybody going. And, uh, you know, we're a team that can score goals, and we're particularly at home where our record is decent. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, obviously Edinburgh derbies always have a different feel, but is there a different approach or a different edge because this is in the Scottish Cup? Well, it's a one-off game, isn't it? You know, it's going to be decided on the day. Um, someone's going to be a hero, and we've got to make sure that hero's in green and white. And, um, you know, it's a tough game. Hearts are a good side, but we are a very dangerous side ourselves. I say we've got goals in us, and we've got to make sure that we defend stoutly uh, against their quality, but also show that, that passion, that fight, the skill and the will that the fans want to see from the hip side. And, uh, you know, do I believe it? Absolutely. It's up to the boys as they cross the white line um, to go and produce. Are these kind of games more about character and, and mentality rather than skill or individual brilliance? I think they're about all of it. I honestly do. I think that, you know, you've got to play the moment. Yes, we're all hurting from the, the derby defeat before and you've got to use that, but you can't play the past. You can't play the future. You have to play the moment. Um, you know, we've got some quality players in our squad, in our team, and uh, we'll set them up right and we'll look forward to, I think, a wonderful game. What have the lads been like ahead of this one? Are they buzzing, just ready to get going? They've been like, or they've been like quite chilled, actually. Like I'm, I'm surprised in terms of there hasn't been a lot of tension um, around the group. Like that does build, obviously, into a crescendo, which is positive moving into the performance. But, you know, fans will bump into players. Like I bump into fans uh, in and around the city. And, and we get that feel, you know, that communication uh, between players, fan base, like squad, staff. Uh, is, is important and strong going into this game. Yeah, you mentioned the fans there, the atmosphere when Hearts came to Easter Road earlier on in this season was electric and, and really helped drive your team on to get that last minute equaliser. Yeah, it did. And, uh, you know, the fans sticking with us to the end is absolutely fundamental. We've had some good uh, late comebacks, if you like, uh, Easter Road this year, you know, Rangers stood out uh, even recently obviously against Dundee United and we need the backing of the fans like that 90 minutes plus extra time is going to be a huge physical effort from the boys and you should never underestimate how much that volume and noise and support uh, can boost the individuals and their and their effort and their work rate. Just finally in terms of team news how are we looking? Yeah we're okay we, we've got a couple of niggles and knocks and, and honestly at this moment in time I, c I couldn't tell you what my starting 11 is um, but come uh, kickoff time, we'll be ready. Fantastically, good luck. Thank you. Well, Mixu, we heard from Lee Johnson just there, and he described today's game as the biggest of the season so far. Would you agree with that? The next game is always the biggest. <laughs> um, but um, obviously, it's a derby match, it's a Scottish Cup tie. Um, the season has been so far so so. Although recently, a couple of good good results. Hearts are flying, yeah. absolutely flying, and scoring freely. Uh, so um, it is a it is a huge one. Um, loads of stake, but it's always you know when, whenever you play Hearts, you know no matter what, it's always a massive game. But uh, this one being a cup tie as well, you know, makes it extra special. Yeah, and when I spoke to him on Thursday to conduct that interview, he said the players at that moment were quite chilled, quite relaxed. Is that expected going into a derby? And, and when does that excitement, nervousness, passion kind of then fill in ahead of a Sunday game? I hope nervousness doesn't creep in. Um, but you, you need that right amount of uh, butterflies in your stomach. Um, absolutely. To, to get the adrenaline going, uh, be ready. Uh, the most important thing is that uh, players get relaxed if they know exactly what they have to do. Um, that, that, that's in the preparation during the week. Um, the, every single player needs to, kn needs to know their role in the team, needs to know their job. And if they are comfortable with that and they have practiced that and they know exactly what to do, that, that brings calmness in their head. This is what is, been, what is expected of me. This is what I'm going to deliver. This is what, I'm, what can happen. This is what I will do and make things happen. Uh, I think uh, that puts the players in the right frame of mind. 
of course you have to tell one or two players who are who can get a little bit wild you know especially these matches you know to to make sure that uh, you know you you handle yourself correctly and uh, no stupid red cards stuff like that because that can happen and ha happens all the time uh, so that's important as well but uh, all in all i think that the players get the calmness knowing what they do yeah, and one player that's looked incredibly calm, I, I should say, since his return from injury is Kevin Nisbet. We spoke about him on the show ahead of Dundee United as well. And then in that game, again, he produced a magnificent performance, scoring two great goals. Oh, he's in a fantastic form at the moment. Um, I think he's got seven goals in six games or something like that. Uh, tremendous. Um, and really good. That, that's what any successful cup needs. You need a centre forward who scores goals. You need a goalkeeper who doesn't concede goals. Um, you know the back line but um, no no at the moment hips and heart uh, both clubs they have a they have a striker that uh, who's in form and um, and hopefully is uh, given this best day if you were lee johnson looking at this game obviously you've played hearts twice already this season too how would you approach this one tactically well i don't think hearts will change too much at all um, they won't so um, knowing they have a back three um, uh, three, four, two, one formation, which they play well. Uh, they're, they're dangerous. Uh, they, they have good balance. But I would, um, I would approach uh, um, having a solid midfield um, in front of the the back four, uh, and at least two sitters. Mm -hmm. It could be a tight three, but two stays all the time. One goes. But what I would like to see: full backs going forward, and hurt hearts in the flanks. Um, and, and spread their back three if possible, pin their, their wing backs back, you know, the, 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 as a back five, and dominate the game and create chances to, to Nisbet in the box and, and, and the others in the box and score goals. Um, of course, uh, you know, Mats is never one team totally dominating. Yeah. So there are, there are periods in the game that um, Hearts will have possession and, uh, and make their passes and, and bend hips their own half. And then, um, then, then there must be a plan how to exploit the the, the harsh defense in counter-attacking mm -hmm. um, so I don't think it's a you know one tactic and one tactic only I think it's that it's a mixture in this situation we apply that counter-attacking and there's plenty pace yeah. uh, hips team to hurt hearts but um, all in all I would I would like to have a have a solid midfield get the full backs forward create chances from the flanks and uh, and of course if you go in the wide areas you know there's, there's room inside. Um, team can only be in one place. If they defend solidly in the white areas, there's room in, inside the middle. And, and obviously all the goals are scored in the middle. So, so uh, it works itself, if you like. But uh, positivity and being up there compact, not to let hearts too much uh, possession and easy passes. Being compact, be right against them, be aggressive, be tackle them, hurry them, make them, uh, force them into mis mistakes and punish them. Absolutely. Well, we'll go to a quick commercial break now, but stay with us because we'll be continuing to pick Mixu's brains and, of course, hear from Ryan Porteous, who's looking for his first Edinburgh Derby win. <laughs>
Simplex City Travel is made up of some of London's leading bespoke travel managers. Simplexity specialise in luxury travel services for corporate and private clients, groups and individuals who lead busy lives. Simplexity will simplify challenging schedules and complex trip itineraries, ensuring our clients always travel with complete peace of mind and in perfect luxury. Simplexity Travel, making luxury travel simple. Hello and welcome back to Hibs TV as Mixu and I continue to build up to today's Edinburgh Derby in the fourth round of the Scottish Cup. Let's quickly take a look at yesterday's results in the competition. Celtic obviously progressed into putting in a fantastic performance. There was a slight shock on the cards too. Hamilton taking Ross County all the way to penalties and coming out winners. Then Rangers, Livingston also progressing through to the next round alongside Dundee United and Motherwell out of the top flight clubs. Mixu, we were picking your brains before on how to approach this game. Where do you think this game then will be won or lost today for Hibs? As always, inside the penalty boxes. Um, both ends attacking penalty box defending penalty box if you defend well or you're lethal um, attacking end you win the match that's the most important thing but of course when we're talking about attacking how you get there how you create those chances in the penalty box yeah then then the performance what happens in the midfield what happens what happens in the, in the, at the back lot you know when you're building up the game what happens in the wide areas you know how the, how the players combine how how you commit players forward so that you en enable those chances in the box um for the players to score um the opposite side defensively it is very important that you are compact it is very important that you, everybody knows inside your own penalty box you know what the opponent tries to do what is their strength what how how do we position ourselves how do we anticipate things to happen of course you can't anticipate 100 percent you know because there might be something else coming at your way but uh, it is very important that uh, players know exactly what to do inside the penalty box and how to get there and how to defend how to how to um, organize everything and um, and be in an organized manner there is obviously a huge focus from Lee Johnson on what he wants his players to do in different situation. But then how much as a manager do you look at Hearts Danger Men, for example? So Robert Snodgrass at Tynecastle bossed the game in the middle of midfield, really dominated uh, the tempo of, of the match and was key for Hearts. How Do you look at, at potentially trying to stop him or do you do what you think is right as a team? A bit of both. Um, but why does the opponent the single player opponent dominate the match maybe he's got too much space maybe maybe you're not close enough to him maybe you give him too much respect you need to be right next to him and stop him play mm -hmm. and win the ball and get the ball before he gets it and uh, and that i think is the is the key of uh, defending defending forward instead of instead of making sure that we have lo loads of players below the ball and nobody puts pressure on the ball and and the player on the ball it's very important to defend forward and be proactive in that and anticipate and, and be there because you know you know how hard's gonna play you know they, they formation they danger dangerous players if you give some of their players uh, room they will pass the ball and they cause you problems and they create chances there's there's no question about that so you need to nullify that you need to stop that happening yeah and you mentioned the game will be won and lost inside the box obviously we spoke about Kevin Nisbet in red hot form. Lawrence Shankland as well for Hearts has been taking a lot of the headlines. Do you see today being almost Kevin Nisbet versus Lawrence Shankland? Oh, it's, it's never like that, you know, between two players. But uh, those players are key um, in terms of winning the match. Um, at the same time, um, defenders are the key and the goalkeeper is the, the key that, uh, you know, you don't concede and uh, you give yourself a chance to win the match. Um, Hips have um, um, experience, um, ag aggressive manner at the back, um, full packs, good legs, uh, full packs who know how to defend, 
um, help the center halves be narrow, uh, that stuff like that. So all the elements are there. It's just up to the being ready, not to get caught by occasion, mm -hmm. and make sure. I remember semi-final um, last season, the Hamden. Yeah, he was never played. We never played. It was hearts. They took that that um, stick in their hand and they they ruled and they dominated and 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 stuff like that. You have to dominate. You have to be there. You have to make it count. You know, it's too late after the game. Oh, we never played. Too late. You have to realize that before the game and yeah. during the week that we do this and we dominate and we are first to that ball. We win the battles. Yeah, and one man that will certainly be taking that attitude will be Ryan Porteous. He spoke to my colleague Gavin Ritu ahead of this one. Poor, it's another big week for the club. Hearts up next in the Scottish Cup. How much are you looking forward to the occasion? Yeah, it's going to be brilliant. Uh, these are the games that, you know, as a football player, you want to enjoy and relish. And, and you know, this is no different. It's the derby that we want to win, but, you know, it makes it a little bit more special. It's a cup competition as well, and it's at home, so no, I'm looking forward to it. With all the speculation around your future, how have you managed to stay focused and concentrated on this game? I think it's, it's relatively easy as a football player to, to get distracted and, and, and things like that, but I've, you know, remained focused and, um, you know, the last couple of games I've, you know, I felt like I've, I've performed well and um, I, I this game, as I said, is no different and it's one that I'm looking forward to and I'm, I'm fully concentrated on. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, played them earlier this month. It was defeat at Tynecastle Way, a completely different game at Easter Road in front of our own fans. Ah, it's a different game. Um, you know, we will have a couple of players back and, uh, as you say, when it's at home, you, you get that little bit added extra edge, and you know, hopefully, the fans come in numbers and uh, and support us because they've been great all season. Yeah, in terms of your own performances, I know you've been playing a, a little bit further up the field in in midfield. How much have you been enjoying playing more far up the field in that advanced role? Ah, it's good. You know, the manager's shown a lot of faith and trust in me to, to put me in the midfield, and um, I've enjoyed it. There's obviously a lot more running about in that, but nah, I enjoy getting stuck in on that side there. And, you know, it's been a good, it's been a learning experience for me as well to, to play different positions and, you know, hopefully I've shown that I'm, I'm capable of doing that. Just finally, how much would a win on Sunday mean to you? Ah, of course, it would mean everything. Um, you know, these games are, are, are really important, you know, for the fans, for the city. Um, but, you know, most importantly, it's about getting the next round of the Scottish Cup and, you know, you know we've got hearts in the next game and, and that's what we need to take, um, take into consideration. It is a big game for the fans and for the city, but, you know, it's, it makes... You know, no difference who we're playing, we want to get through the next round. Appreciate your time. Good luck on Sunday. Well, we heard from Ryan Porteous just then, a man obviously who has been taking a lot of the headlines over the last few weeks. Mix, who's been playing in central midfield at centre back as well. Where do you see him playing today? Midfield. Um, the. The jungle drum is drumming that uh, Paul Handel is fit, he's okay, he's trained and all that. I know he'll come back to this match, but um, Paul is a level-headed guy, um, experienced player. Uh, I remember playing him uh, his debut when he was 17 against um, Cali Thistle, the Scottish Cup, yeah. um, and um, and he was, uh, he was fantastic. Uh, he's a level-headed guy, he knows what to do, you can trust him. Um, that allows Ryan Porteous to to be in the midfield and uh, I like the idea of having there somebody who loves that physicality wants to be close to the opponent wins the ball and he can pass the ball yeah. so so that not too many square passes when he wins that tackle when he wins the ball but create and and find holes and then then we are running uh, I'd like to see that happening and I think we will see that happening if that happens if th those players play in those positions but uh, that's my guess but uh, you never know you never know. Managers' decisions are <laughs> like like I know. Um, some people go like that. W what's going on here? Yeah. But um, this is how I see it. See it happening. Fantastic. Well, that is all we have time for. Mixu, thank you very much for joining us. It's been really, really insightful for all the fans at home. Now, to whet your appetite ahead of this one, not, not that it probably needs doing too much, let's take a look at some iconic Edinburgh Derby goals. Thank you very much for watching.